Hey there, fellows. We have come out to the test track where we will be conducting a bit of testing. We want to find out what effect a tire pressure has on braking distance. Back there we have three lovely cars. All of them have ABS, so that's all good. And all of them are fitted with the right tires specified by the sticker. We can look into the specifications in order to determine what sort of pressure to run given a certain tire size. Anyway, let's do some experimenting and see how tire pressure is going to affect a car's stopping distance. Let's do this. Okay, let's start with this note, with it being the first one in line. We open the door and there's the sticker. Down there we see the recommended tire size, 185-70R14. And that's exactly what the car is rocking. Now I should mention that this is running studless winter tires. And here's what the manufacturer wants us to know. The front tires require the pressure to be at 2.3 kilos per square centimeter, while in the rear it's 2.1 kilos. Or if you prefer kilopascals, it's 230 at the front and 210 at the rear. Okay, we accelerate to 80 k's and do an emergency stop. We'll start by maintaining the tire pressures specified on the sticker. That's 2.3 kilos. Okay, we've dialed the pressure in. I'm about to accelerate and uh, brake at the cones. Mark the distance and let's do this. Flip around and uh, foot to the floor. 40, 50, 60, 70. Better not overcook this, there we are. Place the cone. Place the cone. Mark it as note. 2.3. So there you have it. That's the stopping distance with the tires at the recommended pressure. And now let's proceed to reduce the pressure in the tires. 1.2 atmospheres should work. That does sound like the sort of uh, situation you would get into if you uh, don't monitor your tire pressures uh, frequently. What are you doing? Oh, right, it's supposed to be... Anyway, while we were reducing the tire pressure, we had a look and noticed that, uh, well... Not everybody will be able to tell that it's lower than it should be. And so we're going down to one kilo. We're gonna go ahead and do that, and go out and do some driving. And here we go. 60, 70, 70, and the wheel has come loose. Whose work is this? What gives? Here's the situation, guys. This is quite interesting. On one kilo of pressure, place the cone, the stopping distance has increased by two and a half meters. Two and a half meters is pretty considerable, I'd say. That's with one kilo of pressure, and so now I suggest we put three kilos into each of the wheels. Three bar. Accelerating. That's 40, 50, 60, 70. I just had a cramp in my face. What are we looking at? Oh, nice. The car has obviously rolled further. And quite a bit further. That's two and a half. And over here... 4.1, call it four meters. So overinflated tires also aren't a good thing. And so we've tried one car out. Now let's go ahead and test the Lancer. What's the sticker gonna say? 20560R16. 20560R16. And the recommended pressures are 2.2 at both axles. There's also an amended value. Apparently at speeds over 160 Ks, you need the pressure to be somewhat higher. 
Uh, also, you have uh, the trailer towing pressure, which is something we won't be doing. And so let's go ahead and set the tire pressure at 2.2 bar at all four corners. And here we go. I'll stay in the same gear, 60, 70, 80, on the gauge. There we are. The car has stopped. We're looking good, and now let's check the stopping distance. Yeah, we can certainly tell that the brakes on this thing are way better. I guess there is a difference, I mean, there definitely is. Disc and drum brakes do perform slightly differently. And this is the stopping distance on the required tire pressure. 2.2 bar. What did we start with? Uh, deflating the tires, right? Yeah, let's drop the tire pressure to one kilo just like last time. And uh, brake once again after accelerating. Let's go. Oh, this is so nice and supple. Whoa, better not do that. That is quite a lot of body roll. There's another sign of low tire pressure right there. And let's see what is up. Okay, so what is the situation? A mere 1.7 meters. Well, a mere. 1.7 meters can be a lot in some situations. But now let's bring the pressure up to 3 kilos. 2-3 bar and see how this thing behaves uh, on overinflated tires. That's 80. Let's have a look, shall we? What do we got? 2.213. This was a difference of 1.7, and that is about... 3.3 is considerable, am I right? 3 meters, 30 centimeters. That's a lot, I mean, 3 meters. That is a lot. The car is a 2002. Let's see what the manufacturer recommends. This can be fitted with 15 or 14 inch wheels. What does this one have again? 185, 65, R15. And yeah, these guys are right on the money. And let's have a look. 15 inch wheels, we have values both in kilopascals and kilos per square centimeter. 2.2 kilos up front, 2 kilos in the back. So let's get the pressure to the right values. 2.2 up front and 2.0 in the rear. And uh, check how the car brakes. 60, 70... 80. Oh, wow! True race car, this one is! Holy cow! The ABS went! And the car braked? 10 centimeters more than the Lancer. Well, 10 centimeters. It does have drums in the back. Oh, it has drums. I get that it had discs. But this did very well regardless. So this car's stopping performance was about the same as the Lancer's. That's on the specified pressure, which is 2.2 kilos. And their performance was about the same. 
But now let's bring it down to one kilo and uh, give this another try. Let's do this. Charge! 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Is your ABS module mounted inside the cabin? I mean, it hums like an old and very bad record player that's trying to eject the record. And here's what's up. Two point six, two meters sixty centimeters. Is the increase in stopping distance on deflated tires? And there you have it. Now I suggest we put three kilos in and uh, go one more time. Okay, so that's three kilos. Three bar at all four corners. I mean three kilos, but then it makes no difference. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah, you can definitely feel that the wheels are overinflated. Too much for their own good. Seventy. Eighty. Excellent. Same as what? As with the deflated tires? Well, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about that. The hum of that ABS module, though. This little Nissan did well. And it stopped in the same spot on overinflated tires as it did on underinflated tires. Now let's do a recap of which car stopped where on what pressure. And we'll start with the Nissan Note. On the recommended tire pressure, it stopped right here. Relative to those cones that mark the start of the braking zone. So that's recommended pressure, and uh, here we go. It rolled another two and a half meters. That's with the tire pressure at uh, one kilogram. And this marks... Four meters, that's on tires inflated to three kilos. Three kilos. Mitsubishi Lancer. With the tire pressures... Normal, it needed about 30 meters to break from those cones. That circle actually marks 30 meters. With the pressures at one kilogram... The stopping distance increased by 1 meter 70 centimeters. And with the tires overinflated, that's 3 kilos. Stopping distance increased by 330. So there are your results. Now the Nissan Sunny. This is where the car stopped on normal tire pressure. And from there, how much would that be now? Yeah. I think I can round that up to two and a half meters. That's where the tires... Man, do brakes work in strange ways. It stopped in about the same spot on overinflated and underinflated tires. And where does that leave us then? Well, this here sticker you got attached to the door jam in this area, though in some cars you'd have it on the door or the fuel filler cover. Anyway, it's there for a reason. Doesn't just serve as decoration. The information you got on there is very important indeed. You would have seen and acknowledged that for yourselves. So keep track of your tire pressures. Yeah, and another thing. Even if you don't have a gauge to measure it, you can tell when a tire has gotten hot and the pressure has increased. 
because obviously all of the imperfections in the road surface are going to be felt much better as the tires have become way stiffer. So with higher tire pressure, the ride is going to become way choppier. If that's the case, that tells you that the tire pressure is too high. But when it's low, it's the other way around. The car doesn't handle, it becomes all jiggly, doesn't want to roll forward, it accelerates slower, fuel consumption rises. But there is a notion that you can save a bit of fuel on higher pressure. But let's not forget that it's all about safety. And after that there is the matter of handling. And that's why you have the sticker that tells you how much pressure you need inside your tires. So you saw the results of today's experiment full well, as have we. So keep an eye on the pressure in your tires and stay safe out there on the road and that's all i got watch us subscribe send in your suggestions comment give us a big thumbs up all right catch you later